So with less than a week until Election Day, what can the parties do to come out ahead? Let's bring in a panel of Ontario candidates. Paul Calandra is the PC candidate for Markham Stow Stowville. Merritt Stiles is the NDP, Ontario NDP candidate for Davenport. And John Fraser is the Ontario Liberal candidate for Ottawa South. Welcome all. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us because it must be a very busy weekend for you guys. Uh, so, Mr. Calandra, let, let me start with you. Health care is the top overall issue in this campaign. And are you surprised about that and about the fact that your government's track record during the pandemic doesn't seem to have hurt your chances at the polls come Thursday? Look, uh, Joyce, I think uh, health care is always going to be top of mind for uh, for many uh, people, not only in Ontario, but across the country. Uh, but overwhelmingly, I'm still hearing at the doors uh, jobs and economic growth because people understand uh, uh, that a healthy economy, a strong economy where jobs are being created is the avenue by which we can make the investments that we need, not only in health care, but in infrastructure, critical infrastructure to keep uh, jobs coming back to the province of Ontario. And uh, look, I'll say it's been just a fun, exciting, positive campaign, a uh, great effort energy. Uh, it's been unlike any campaign that I've ever been a part of and uh, I'm really excited for the uh, for the last week of the campaign. So your government is looking to build more hospitals and increase bed capacity but hospitals are facing yeah. uh, like many other uh, businesses and industries a labor crisis. So how is your party yeah. planning on addressing the nursing shortage aside from the bed shortages and the backlogs in surgery which are like right now very critical? Yeah, absolutely. Look, uh, there uh, uh, we've put significant resources in order to uh, catch up on the backlog of surgeries. But you're absolutely right uh, when it comes to health and human resources. So we are putting the resources behind hiring thousands of additional nurses. I'm the Minister of Long-Term Care. We're increasing funding to ensure that we hire 27,000 additional PSWs. We are opening up three additional. Uh, uh, medical schools so that we can graduate more doctors, uh, one in Scarborough, one in uh, in, uh, in Brampton, uh, uh, another in Durham region, because we need more doctors. We're offering incentives to ensure that nurses, if they want to uh, stay in practice in underserviced areas of the province, that's available to them. And we're rebuilding health care in every part of the province, north, south, east and west, urban and rural, because we want to end that divide between urban and rural. As I said, we're making a multi-billion dollar investment in health Healthcare. And ultimately, that is good for the economy at the same time, because when we yeah. hear it often, if we're going to make investments, it has to be uh, investments not only in infrastructure, but a good yeah, healthcare I, I, system I, I, is also what drives a strong economy. I, I, I want to bring in your, 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 your opponents here. Um, you know, what you're suggesting is not going to take five minutes. So, um, Merritt Stiles, your yes. party was the official opposition during the pandemic. So, why haven't you been able to capitalize? Uh, on that time as opposition, especially well, actually, during a pandemic, when, when people were quite critical of the handling of it. Well, I think actually, you know, um, we, we've been very successful at, at pushing back against this government, particularly around some of the more egregious cuts that they were proposing to make. But, but you know, this is a government that has been very focused, uh, despite what uh, Mr. Calandra says. Uh, this is a government that actually came out of this pandemic proposing more and deeper cuts uh, to health care, for example, um, uh, and to schools, uh, to all those areas where uh, we should be really investing right now, particularly coming out of the pandemic. We had the largest and I would say the most effective official opposition in decades in Ontario. And um, we in the NDP uh, were able to push them back in many areas and, shed a, and, and shine light, uh, particularly on some of the more, again, egregious cuts and issues, particularly in areas lo like long-term care. And what I'm hearing on the door right now is, as you said, healthcare is really top of mind for so many Ontarians. Um, we are hearing a lot from people about uh, ER waiting lists, uh, surgery. Uh, we're hearing about uh, long-term care and people who are still struggling to support their family in long-term care. And my, my dogs are having a fight behind me right now. So that's, <laughs> I bet you can hear that. Um, but you know, it's gonna be really important over the next few years that we restore hospital funding, that we make sure that it always keeps up with inflation, with population growth, with aging, and with all the unique needs of our communities. Um, and that's the kind of thing that I'm hearing from Ontarians that they want to see and why they're really excited about the NDP's platform. Uh, 
Fighting dogs. Um, okay, Mr. Fraser, let me ask you, what in your platform are you proposing as a solution to those labor shortages, bed shortages, uh, you know, and a health care that is failing so many Ontarians now? Well, some of the things that are on our platform is a million dollars over the next two years to clear the, the surgical backlogs that have been caused by COVID. You know, people have had to put their lives on hold. And uh, we've also, in terms of health care human resources, which is a critical piece um, proposed to expand nursing school spaces by at least 10 percent to increase medical school spaces to um, offer to pay for tuition for those professionals who choose to work long term in the north and rural areas. But here in Ottawa South, I knock on doors. You know, there's two hospitals here. So I talk to a lot of healthcare professionals. I talk to a lot of nurses. And one of the biggest challenges is, is Bill 124 and their wages being capped at 1%. I mean, that's an affordability issue for them. But it's more about respect. You know, nurse, nurses are leaving the profession at twice the rate they normally do. Twice the rate. And that's because this government has chosen to cap their wages at 1% while allowing other frontline uh, workers, male-dominated professions, to continue to bargain. So nurses are upset. They're really upset, and they're not happy. And uh, if you want to keep um, an employee, you want to, you know, you can't care for people if you don't actually. Uh, you can have a bed, but if you don't have a nurse, it's not going to work really well. And if you want to keep people, I would suggest respectfully uh, to the premier and to my colleague Paul that you have to treat them with respect. And nurses feel very disrespected, and that's not a good position for us to be in as a province right now. Okay, so expect, you know, pandemics and be ready for, you know, the unpredictable in terms of the weather as well. I don't have a lot of time left, but I want to hear the three of you on this. Mr. Calandra, we know that the, this storm hit Ontario, and according to the Nanos poll, the environment is now an important issue. What will your party do to make Ontario resilient against extreme weather? We have very short answers, please. Uh, look, I'll just say this. My community was also hit uh, hard by the, uh, the storm, Stovall, and of course the neighboring community of, uh, uh, of Uxbridge. Uh, that is why we have been so focused on infrastructure, Joyce, throughout this campaign and before. We knew that we had to make investments to improve the infrastructure. It was sorely missed during the previous 15 years of Liberal government. And as I said, that is something the Premier has been talking about since day one and something that we have focused on in this campaign uh, going forward. Okay. Mer Merit Styles. Um, was this avoidable? In other words, you know, it became a huge disaster. They said it was like the ice storm, which I covered, and it was terrible. Could we well, be better I mean, prepared? Yeah, absolutely we could have been better prepared. And if this government uh, had been more interested in actually uh, emergency preparedness over the last few years rather than, uh, rather than things like uh, license plate uh, stickers, uh, we might, or, or by the way, ripping down wind farms and tearing out electrical vehicle uh, charging stations, we might have been in a better place. And I'm hearing like today, 35 schools are still closed in the Ottawa region. I mean, this should, we should not be in this situation. The government is MIA, and uh, and we definitely should have been in a much better place. And it and it worries me, and it worries a lot of Ontarians that you know the next big I disaster wanna... will we be better prepared? La last word to you, uh, John Fraser. We only have 20 seconds left. Okay, just can very we be quickly, better prepared than this? Yes, we should be better prepared. But one thing I can say is our community was devastated. There are still people without power, people without water in apartment buildings, and Premier Ford did not come to Ottawa. He didn't come to Ottawa during the occupation. This is a serious situation in this community, and leaders need to show up. And it's extremely disappointing that the Premier hasn't shown up here in Ottawa. Just for an hour. It takes an hour to get here. Show up for an hour, two hours, take a look, talk to folks. That's what you do in these kind of situations, and it's really disappointing they didn't. That's all the time we have. Candidates Paul Calandra, Merritt Stiles, John Fraser. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time and good luck with your campaigns. Thanks, Joyce. Thanks. Thanks. Good luck, everybody.